Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. And today we're doing another specialty spotlight, this time with my colleague and friend, Dr. Judy Gaddy. She is a pediatric neuroradiologist and the director of academic innovation at Lurie Children's Hospital of Chicago. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for inviting me. So I start off all of these videos by asking like, why radiology? How did you find it? When did you find it? What was your path like? Yes, so I was lucky in that one of my husband's family members and my husband was my boyfriend at the time, before even before medical school. And um, one of his family members is a private practice radiologist. So that was really my first introduction. And before that, I knew nothing about it. And then during medical school, I really enjoyed our radiology lectures. We had one particular professor who taught us everything about radiology, and he was a former alum from my medical school. And therefore, he was a DO, but he was working in an MD community or you know MD type institution. And um, so I really enjoyed learning about radiology from both of them. But I think it really fits my personality because I really like details. So I love the detail oriented type of, um, you know, diagnostic radiology, trying to figure out what the answer is for the referring physicians. And I also really liked the environment, mostly dark and quiet. That really appealed to me after doing my ER rotation during medical school. I knew that loud and bright was not for me. <laughs> I can totally understand that, especially you're talking about very detailed things. I mean, pediatric neuroradiology. I'm not sure how much more detailed it really gets than that. Neuro in general is like tiny, tiny anatomy. So how did you find pediatric neuro? Is that something that you always knew? Not something I always knew for sure. So first I realized that I wanted to do neuro and I figured that out because I really enjoyed our neuroscience section in medical school. And that was in our second year of uh, preclinical education. And then I started shadowing in radiology during first and second year. And actually my first research project ever was on the anatomy and pathology of the temporal bone. So <laughs> very detailed. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. So I knew I loved neuro and I loved neuro when I started residency. And then at the end of my first peds radiology rotation, which uh, was in Delaware, and I did peds neuro, and I just loved the intricacy and the all of the anatomy and everything. And I remember specifically coming back to my adult hospital and speaking to my program director at the time saying, you know what, I think I want to do peds neuro. And he laughed and he said, I do chest. Like, how am I supposed to help you? And he kind of laughed, but I think he was serious. He said, why don't you Google whoever wrote the textbook and contact them? And I'm like, what? And so I said, there's only one textbook. And that is by Dr. Jim Barkovich at UCSF. And so I Googled him, found his email address, which was easy to find. And then I emailed him and no joke in less than 24 hours, he emailed me back. I said, you know, I introduced myself, said, I think I want to do Pete's Neuro, but I don't know anyone. Like, what do I do? And he emailed me back and was super nice and said, you should contact one of my former trainees, one of my former fellows who is now at CHOP in Philly and told me her name. It was Dr. Erin Schwartz, but she had gotten married and so I said, okay. So I Googled and it was hard to find her email address because she had gotten married. Mm -hmm. But after doing some digging, I got her email address and then I contacted her and she said, why don't you come check it out? So I asked for a day off to go check it out and I loved it. And then she said, okay, why don't you come back for a month rotation, which wasn't even a possibility at my program. Yeah. And so again, I went back to my program director and said, hey, I really wanna do this. So we made it happen. I got a Pennsylvania medical license and spent a month there and the rest is history. That's where I ended up doing my Peds Neuro Fellowship. 
That's pretty amazing. I think that just goes to show how friendly radiology is. Like if you reach out to someone, I'm pretty sure like nine, and nine and a half times out of 10, someone will get back to you, even if you just cold email them. That's incredible. Yeah. Um, that's, and that's a really great story. Just a testament to like, you know, shoot your shot and just try because you never know what'll come out of it. Yeah. Um, I have a question for you. So did you end up doing like PEDS and then PEDS neuro? I know you kind of have to combine that like pathway. What was your way of finding that? So since I knew that I loved neuro and I loved PEDS neuro, I decided to go that route. You can go either route. So you can do what I call adult neuro, but everyone else just calls diagnostic <laughs> neuro. You can do that. And then PEDS neuro radiology fellowship, or you can do PEDS radiology, meaning like more of the body and then PEDS neuro. It just really depends on what you see your practice like. If you, you know, only want to focus on PEDS or if you want to do both adult and peds, which is what I did at the beginning of my career, either way you can do, um, you know, 100% peds neuro. It just depends on what you want to do in the future. Yeah, that makes sense. I've heard of both pathways, so I was just curious, like what, um, which one you you took. That being said, what do you do as like a pediatric neuroradiologist? What is your like day like? So it really depends because we have so many variable shifts. So it depends day to day, but uh, I will take a typical day for you. So I get up early. We have two dogs, so we walk our dogs a lot. So we have to get up, walk them, feed them, you know, get ready for the day. And then I drive to work. And when, once I get there, you know, get settled, get in the reading room, look at the schedule for the day, see how busy we are. And then I just start picking up cases, whether they're from overnight or new cases that are actively coming in. We do have separate CT and MR rotations. And, um, you know, so we focus on whichever the modality is. And then we have trainees who rotate through since we're in Chicago. We have a ton of residents all from the Chicago area rotating through. And we also have the Northwestern Neuroradiology Fellows and we have a dedicated pediatric neuroradiology fellow as well. So, you know, going throughout the day, teaching trainees, going over cases with them, we often have multidisciplinary conferences. So we have a pediatric brain tumor board, neurology conference, epilepsy conference, almost something every day of the week. So just depending on who's assigned to that, you may have to prepare those cases and do the multidisciplinary conference. And there's a lot of interaction, especially on the peds neuro aspect and doing a lot of sedated or anesthesia MRIs. We have a lot of interaction with the MRI technologist calling them or even going to the scanner to making, making sure that everything is appropriate so that the kids don't have to come back to get additional imaging. So lots of interaction, clinicians calling you know, to ask for opinions or wanting to review cases. But a typical day would be like seven to five, but again, very different shifts that overlap. Totally. Um, that makes sense. In terms of, what was I about to say? Yeah. When I was at Boston Children's, I was going to say that we also did a lot of in, like interdisciplinary conferences because as you mentioned, like it's pediatrics, I feel like even more than just adult radiology is very team-based, like epilepsy conference, for example, you mentioned brain tumor board, like things are very interdisciplinary, much more than I really felt like it was at my own hospital. So that's really interesting. And it's um, it's fun to be at like a children's hospital. I feel like you probably see a lot more subspecialized pa like pathologies rather than a more general community hospital. Yeah, definitely. We have tons of pathology. <laughs> yeah, I so many, I can't even keep them straight most of the time. <laughs> In terms of like the job market, I know that some people deter or some people have deterred residents from going into peds and even peds neuro. But did you ever feel like it was difficult for you to find a job as a pediatric neuroradiologist? That was something that, you know, maybe for a second crossed my mind, just like, what is the job market going to be like when I'm done training? But there's no way to predict what the job market's going to be like. And I think what's most important is that you choose what's going to make you happy doing that for the rest of your life. And it's all cyclical. So some years are better than others about, you know, job market. But um, honestly, the jobs that I have had so far, I got through word of mouth for the most part. So 
there are job postings, you know, different websites, different societies, but I think it's important to make connections and let people know if you are looking and in what areas you're looking, because then you might find out before it's even posted. Yeah, I've definitely also heard that, that most of the jobs end up being taken before they even are publicly posted. Yeah. So you mentioned earlier that you're a DO, and I just wanted to go into that a little bit. How do you feel like being a DO affected you and your training, maybe finding resources, like you mentioned, cold emailing people? Can you talk a little bit about your path being a DO? Yes. Yeah, so I think a lot has changed since when I was in medical school and when I was applying, because from my understanding, it's all sort of combined now. It's not as separate as it was. But when I was applying, there were separate DO radiology residencies versus, so osteopathic versus allopathic. And what I had just heard through the grapevine was that it was harder to get into the osteopathic because there were less spots and there were more people, you know, fighting over those few spots. So I didn't even consider going that route. So I knew that in order for me to get a spot, it was going to be more difficult because we take separate boards. And so I ended up taking both the DO and MD boards just so that the, you know, people who are going to potentially interview me understood what my scores meant. So it did mean more work because I had to take more exams. And then, um, like you said, it can be hard to find resources. So as I, you know, gave you that example of just reaching out to someone, I think it's very important to try to make connections early. So I ended up doing three, I believe three away rotations back to back. So I was traveling all over the country going to different hospitals for months at a time to just get people to see my face, know me, and, you know, potentially interview me. And that uh, research project that I did with the temporal bone, that was at one of those places. So I think if you start doing research with an institution early, so they get to know you and get to know your work, that can be very helpful. And just, you know, making as many connections as possible. One thing that I think um, that I didn't mention that helped me a lot was getting involved in our radiology interest group. And, you know, that way I got to learn more about the specialty, but also got to meet more people. So if your school does have a radiology interest group, I think that's a good place to start. And if they don't have one, start one. That's really great advice. And I think all of that really translates easily into the questions I'm getting about how to stand out with a pass-fail step one and things of that nature, like away rotations, getting them to know you and know your work is so important. And I had no idea that it was um, actually harder to get a DO residency as opposed to like an MD, but that totally makes sense because there are less spots. I had no idea. I'm so, I'm so glad that you mentioned that today. Um, and I mean, in general, what do you have any advice for medical students or residents that are considering pediatric neuro? Would you encourage them? I have a feeling everyone will say yes, because it's a great <laughs> field, but whatever advice you have, I'd love to hear. Of course. And like I said, you know, before, I think it's important to go after what you can imagine yourself doing for the rest of your life, not being worried about what the job market's going to be like, how much am I going to get paid? Because in general, everyone's going to get paid about the same. You know, there are differences between academic and private practice, but other than that, it's about the same. And again, like I said, you know, getting involved early, radiology interest groups, doing away rotations if you can. If you can't do a full away rotation, maybe looking to see if you can at least shadow or observe, even if it's after hours, evenings, weekends, on call, just so they get to know who you are and so you can make sure that it's the right fit for you. And try to get involved in research projects early. If you reach out to someone and they don't have a research project in mind, come up with something on your own and say, hey, can we do a case report on this? Can we look more into this topic? and just show that you're interested. Oh yeah, that's 100% true. Oftentimes I don't have anything to offer, but there are so many times that if someone comes to me with an idea, I can usually work that into my schedule and help them out and at least point them in the right direction. So that was great. And I think all of that advice is so pertinent, especially for med students and residents right now going through this COVID pandemic, things are all kind of shut down. So hopefully whoever is watching gleaned something from Dr. Gabby's amazing advice. Thank you so much for spending a few minutes with me. I really appreciate it. And um, 
I will have all of Dr. Gandhi's information for social media listed below in case you do have a question specifically about pediatric neuroradiology or anything else that she mentioned. If you are a DO and you want advice, I think she'd be more than happy to help you out. And if you have any other questions, feel free to comment below and we will get back to you. And with that, I will see you all in the next one. Bye. Sounds good. Thank you. Take care. <laughs>